next, te next technique I want to show you involves the chisel. And this is a process called paring. Uh, right now, we use the flush cut saw to cut these splines uh, relatively flush to the surface. But we can get it a lot closer before we do our final sanding. And so you want to hold the chisel nice and flat against this surface. But you can lift it up maybe one or two degrees. And then you want to introduce sort of a slicing motion working into the end grain. So this is the sort of 45 degrees of the end grain. So it's a bit of a mixture of end grain and edge grain in this black walnut spline here. So we, we want to be careful about just sanding it because it's also harder than the yellow cedar that we're using. So if we sand this, the yellow cedar sands faster and it's really, really difficult to, to get this to, to be flush in the end. You'll always sort of be able to feel it if you just do sanding. But if you do paring, like we're doing now, you can get it a whole lot closer to being perfectly flush to the surface than you can with sanding. So I can barely feel any height difference there right now. So you can spend a bit more time with that. Work on this one as well. So this is sort of a slicing motion and I'm using this hand to put downward pressure and this hand is sort of doing a, a sort of sawing type motion so we can work on the end grain, cutting through those fibers. There, that's nice. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to tip this up too much because then you're going to dig into your project and it's going to be worse off than when you started. This will be a good example because this one's sticking up a little bit more than the other two. So we should be able to get a fine shaving off of this. There we go. So now these feel like they've been sanded because a cut edge is very, very high quality. Another thing is you want to be careful about working away this way because you can break out chunks of your spline because the grain's going at 45 degrees and think about it breaking, breaking away the way your finger could, right? So sideways pressure doesn't like sideways pressure. So it can open up and you can lose a chunk of your corner. I'm going to round these corners a little bit anyway, but that should leave a nice surface finish, nice and flat and ready for sanding. So I'm going to show you how to make this trim flush to the surface on both the base and the top. I'm only going to show you on one though. The first tool I'm going to show you is called a card scraper. It has sort of a, a hook fo formed into the metal, so it will actually remove material quite reasonably, relatively easily. I find it's easier to draw this toward you rather than push away. I feel I have more control. But this sort of works a similar, similar way to a glue scraper, where, uh, wherein the wood um, gets sort of scraped away by the, by the hook that's created in the metal. You could use a glue scraper to do this as well, but a glue scraper tends to have a little bit more of a rounded profile, and so you may end up digging into this, into the wood you're not really wanting to, to touch. We want to bring the trim down to the same level as the, the base substrate. So there's a bit of a lip here right now. We can use, use this to create some shavings. As you can see, it's creating some shavings and this can get it relatively fl flush and ready for sanding. But I do have a couple other methods that I can show you. We can also use a chisel to get rid of some of this glue. So holding it nice and flat on the table, you can use that paring motion I just showed you with the end grain. It also works on edge grain. You sort of need to be a little bit more careful with uh, 
how you apply this technique because now the wood is going to want to split along its grain and tear up this way. So you need to be cautious of that. Our next option is a block plane. We want to make sure we set the height of the blade very, very fine so that we're not removing too much material. This is a little bit nicer than the chisel because it limits how much material you can actually remove and the wood is less likely to split along its grain. But we have grain going in two different directions on this, on this piece. And so we want to make sure we're not running right off the end of this and tearing this grain out on this side. So I like to run this at about 45 degrees one way and back the other way as well. So that dug in a little deeper than I would like. So I stop there and I'm going to use the card scraper to, to tidy this up a little bit. Card scraper produces some fairly nice uh, shavings. And I think is, is one of the safer options for getting this material to be nice and flush. One option that I like to do is I like to plant the corner and then use this sort of like a radius and just removing the material in the places where I want material removed and I'm less likely to, to damage this surface. You don't want to dig in the corner, so just working relatively smoothly. And the thing that I like about card scrapers is you can put a heavier hook on the scraper with the burnishing tool by going over it a couple more times or you can put a finer burr on it like I've got here and it's going to be less aggressive, remove less material. So after I've done the bulk of that material removing, I can use the finer side to have a bit more control. So the glue can sometimes be an, an issue for card scrapers. So you might want to come in here with a chisel first and clean up these little bits of glue because the scraper likes to sort of bounce off the tops of those and won't want to remove the, the wood on the other side. That's much nicer. I'd say that corner is done. So all along here is finished. A little bit of tear out here, but that's okay because I'm actually going to be rounding this over a little bit. That tear out was actually from when I did the chisel. The card scraper is a little more gentle than uh, using the chisel or using the block plane. So that's my preferred method. We do also have these. These, uh, these hold a scraper similar to uh, a block plane, but it's at a much, much steeper angle. And so this is gonna cut in this direction if you push. But once again, I prefer to pull, I have more control. Sometimes they make a nasty noise. And the, the part that's difficult about these with small things is Sometimes your clamps get in the way, but they do a nice job and they've got a hook on them just the same way as the card scraper. So we've only taken care of one side of this. The other side 
because now we have it flat, one side is flat, we can use the thickness sander to sand this trim down to this surface here. And it will take care of all of that for us. Uh, we don't have to worry so much about the glue, the sandpaper would take care of that. pretty happy with that. This side has some marks in it from my, uh, my other tooling, from the scraper, from the chisel, and from the block plane. So I'm gonna take off a little bit of this side too. 